A patient like no other, escorted out of this private Palermo hospital, his cancer treatment now interrupted because the elderly man in the beanie cap had in fact been Italy's most wanted mafia boss for three decades. Matteo Messina Denaro. He disappeared from public view in the early 90s. The police had to guess at his appearance, allowing for plastic surgery. Denaro once boasted that he could fill a whole cemetery single-handed. In the end, there was two illustrious corpses that cemented his bloody legacy. First, the bombing of anti-mafia judge Giovanni Falcone, his wife and three bodyguards. The crater left by the bomb on the Palermo Airport Road was 100 meters in diameter. Two months later, Paolo Borsellino, the other prominent anti-mafia judge, was killed when his car exploded after he'd gone to visit his mother. It's time to talk about the Sicilian Mafia, also known as Cosa Nostra, or the Our Thing Crew. These guys are no joke, they run a tight operation in Sicily, Italy, and they don't mess around. The Sicilian Mafia is made up of different groups, or families as we call them in English. In Italian, they are known as Cosca. These crews are organized in a hierarchical structure and are involved in all sorts of illegal activities, from extortion to smuggling gambling, and even settling disputes between other criminals. Now, you might have heard the term mafia used to describe organized crime in general, but technically speaking, it only refers to the Sicilian organization and its counterparts in the United States. Throughout the country, all through the weekend, the scene was repeated. More than 3,000 police were involved. More than 300 arrest warrants issued against suspected mafia criminals, even some with an American connection, ranging from small-time hitmen to well-heeled businessmen. The raids were the direct result of the testimony of this man, Tommaso Buschetta, 56, a mafia millionaire arrested in Brazil and brought to Italy two months ago. Law enforcement officials say Buschetta has done what no other high-level mafia boss has ever done in Italy. He's talked. Tommaso Buscetta, a former Mafia member, flipped the script and became a snitch for the government. He spilled all the beans about the organization and how it's run, giving authorities a peek behind the curtain that they never had before. According to Buscetta, each Cosca that's Italian for crew or family has its own exclusive right to operate in a specific area, and they all respect each other's turf. This territory is usually a small town or neighborhood within a city. Now, each Cosca is run by a boss who's elected by the other members for a one-year term. This boss runs the show with the help of an underboss who's like his right-hand man. The boss also has a counselor called a consigliere who provides a neutral perspective on the crew's activities and keeps an eye on the leadership. So, that's the deal each Cosca is different but they all follow this basic structure. The heart of the Mafia is made up of members who go by different names, like mafiosi, soldiers, laborers, or just plain old young men. Now, if a family is big enough, the mafiosi might be split into different groups, each led by a capo. But most families are too small for that kind of extra hierarchy. On top of that, there are also a ton of associates people who work with the crew but aren't officially members. They still do work for the family though, so they are part of the crew's extended network. Above the bosses of each family, the Mafia has set up commissions to make sure nobody steps on anyone else's toes. These commissions have to approve any action by one clan that could affect another, like a killing in another family's turf. Each commission is responsible for overseeing Mafia activity in a particular province, which is then divided into districts made up of four or five families each. Each district has a representative on the commission, and they make sure everyone's playing by the rules and not causing any problems for the other families. So, that's how the Mafia keeps everything running smoothly and avoids any major conflicts between families. Most experts agree that the Mafia first came into being during Italy's unification in the 19th century, though some think it might have existed even earlier than that. See, it all started with these private armies, called Mafi, that were hired by absentee landlords to protect their estates from bandits in the lawless conditions that were rampant throughout Sicily for centuries. 
the tough guys in these armies organized themselves and became so powerful that they turned against the landowners and started extorting money from them in exchange for protecting their crops. Over time, the Mafia expanded their services to include arbitration, oversight, and enforcement of agreements, and different groups of them would even meet to settle disputes. By the 20th century, the Mafia had evolved from just being enforcers of feudal law to becoming the administrators of an alternative legal system that dominated much of the region's economy. And just like in any legal system, there's a golden rule you can't seek justice outside the system. This code of silence is known as Omerta, and it's the most important law in the Mafia. So, that's how the Mafia came to be, and how it became so powerful in Sicilian society. The Mafia has had some serious run-ins with the Italian state over the years. The first time was back in 1925, when the fascist dictator Benito Mussolini decided he'd had enough of their shenanigans. He appointed Cesare Mori, a retired police officer, as the new prefect of Palermo, and gave him free reign to clean up the Mafia's act. From October 1925 to June 1929, Mori and his forces went on a rampage through the towns where the Mafia held power. They were brutal, no doubt about it, and they terrorized the Mafia into submission. By the time they were done, the fascists had arrested over 11,000 people, and many mafiosi had fled to the United States to escape prosecution. So, the Mafia has definitely faced some tough opposition in the past, but they always seem to find a way to survive and keep going. The Mafia was running wild in Sicily, doing whatever they wanted without any consequences. But then this guy named Mori came along and started a campaign to suppress them. And you know what? It worked. Mori was able to bring down the Mafia and restore order to the streets of Sicily. But then, the Allied forces came in and changed everything. They released a bunch of mafiosi from prison, saying they were victims of the fascist regime. And to make matters worse, some of the community leaders that the new government replaced were actually mafiosi or associated with them. So basically, the Mafia had a resurgence, thanks to the Allied forces. They were able to continue doing their thing, only now they had even more power and influence than before. And that's how the Mafia continued to thrive in Sicily, even after Mori's campaign. It just goes to show you that sometimes, even the people who are supposed to be helping can end up making things worse. Stay woke people. So, as I mentioned earlier, the Mafia started to adapt to the changing economy on the island by shifting their attention from agriculture to business and industry, particularly the building sector. And guess what? They almost completely controlled it. But that wasn't enough for them. They also started smuggling cigarettes and other goods, which made them richer than they ever thought possible. However, this also led to a lot of competition over profits, which ultimately led to violence. In fact, between 1962 and 1963, Palermo was regularly rocked by shootouts and bombings during the so-called First Mafia War. The war only ended when a car bomb killed seven law enforcement officers, causing public outrage. This led to the formation of the first anti-mafia commission by the Italian government, which drove the mafia into near dormancy. But here's the catch, very few mafiosi were actually imprisoned for their crimes. And that's how the mafia continued to operate in Sicily, even after facing setbacks. They adapted to the changing times and continued to amass wealth and power, all while avoiding imprisonment. It's a scary thought, but that's the reality of the situation. In the 1970s, Luciano Leggio, the boss of the Corleone family, began a campaign to take control of the Mafia that led to the Sakan Mafia War. This conflict resulted in hundreds of deaths and Leggio's imprisonment. But even with Leggio behind bars, the Mafia's thirst for power continued. His successor, Salvatore the Beast Rina, took over and successfully concluded the war, becoming the Mafia's first boss of bosses. However, this victory was short-lived. The violence that accompanied the struggle for power led to a government crackdown, and Rina retaliated by bombing officials and allegedly kidnapping and murdering the son of an informant. In 1987, 
the state convicted 338 mafiosi in what became known as the Maxi Trial, a significant blow to the Mafia's power. And finally, on January 15, 1993, Rena was captured and brought to justice. It's a never-ending cycle of violence and power struggles. Rena's designated successor, Bernardo Provenzano, consolidated control of the Mafia by 1995 and ran the organization until his own arrest in 2006. The current boss of bosses is believed to be Matteo Messina Diabolic De Naro, who has been a fugitive from the law since 1993. The Mafia continues to operate throughout Sicily, but it is consistently harried by Italian law enforcement. Many believe that the Andrangheta from Calabria, the tip of Italy's peninsula, has surpassed the Mafia as the most powerful criminal society in Italy, and indeed, the world. The Sicilian Mafia has been a powerful force in Sicily for centuries, and its influence has been felt around the world, from its beginnings as a criminal organization to its current status as an international crime syndicate. The Sicilian Mafia has had a profound impact on the history of Sicily and beyond.